Hi. The purpose of this video is to show how the objects in Blender's Fluid Simulator work. We'll look at domains, obstacles, inflow, outflow, and of course fluid objects. Blender's Fluid Simulator at first seems very challenging. However, if you think about how fluids behave in real life, think of water pouring out of a faucet into a sink or into a bathtub, the fluid simulator starts to become more logical. In this tutorial, we're going to focus on the objects in Blender's fluid simulation. Let's start with the most basic fluid simulation. At a minimum, the fluid simulator needs two things. A fluid, which can be free-flowing like a waterfall, or muddy like water in a pond, and a domain, which is the area in which the fluid lives. Be warned, this doesn't look exactly like water dripping from a faucet, but it does look like some icky gook falling down in a fluid-like manner. So start Blender. Usually we delete the default cube. This time, however, we will use the default cube. It will be the domain, the area in which the fluid lives. So go to front view by pressing num1. The blue Z arrow will point up. We need this because fluids are affected by gravity. And in Blender, gravity is by the Z axis. Z is up and minus Z is down. Let's make the domain a bit higher along the X axis. Press the S key to scale, then the Z key, then scale up the cube for Blender units. Grab it with the G key and move it along the Z direction with the Z key so that the domain sits on the X axis. Before we do anything with the cube, duplicate it, Shift D, and move it away from the original cube. You'll see why later this is a good idea. Just to track things, let's name our objects. Select the original cube. Press the N key to bring off the Transform Properties window. Rename the cube to Domain. Make sure the cube is in Object Mode. Press Tab if the cube is in Edit Mode. To tell the Fluid Simulator that the cube is a domain, press the Object buttons, F7, then the Physics button, the second button in the second group of buttons, Press the Fluid button to enable the Fluid Simulator on the extreme right, and then click the Domain button. Press the Z key to go into wireframe mode. You can see objects inside of other objects in wireframe mode. We now need to add a fluid. Add an icosphere, space, add, mesh, icosphere, accepting the default of two subdivisions. Scale it down using the S key so that the icosphere looks like a drop and is positioned at the par top part of the cube. The amount of water depends on the size of the icosphere, by the way. Make sure that the icosphere is inside the cube. Check out all the views and rotate just to make sure. In the Transform Properties window, rename the icosphere from Sphere to Fluid. Let's make the fluid source green so we can see it. Press F5 to add a material. To make the fluid source green, set R to 0, G to 1, and B to 0. Select the domain and go to the material buttons. Make the domain color red by setting R to 1, G to 0, and B to 0. Weird things happen to the domain during the fluid simulation, as you'll see. To tell the fluid simulator that the icosphere is the fluid, make sure the icosphere is in object mode, then press the object buttons, F7, and the physics button. Press the fluid button to enable the fluid simulator for the icosphere, and click on the fluid button. We're ready to run the fluid simulator. The cube is the domain, and the icosphere is the fluid. To run it, select the cube. In the Fluid Simulator buttons for the cube, press the big Bake button. The cube turns into a blob and starts falling down like a drop. The falling st stops where the cube used to be, as if the cube was still there, although it doesn't show. Believe it or not, we've created a fluid animation. 
Press Alt A to see it in wireframe mode. Press Escape to stop the animation. The animation is done over 250 frames by default. To create an animation, press F10, the scene buttons. Set the output directory to the directory where you want to store the animation. In the output panel, navigate to the directory and then select Select Output Pictures. In the format panel, select the type of video you want to create. The default is JPEG. I like the AVI format with the Cam Studio 1.4 lossless codec. I use Cam Studio to capture screenshots for these tutorials. If you choose uncompressed, the video will take a lot of space. Click the Anim button and wait. The animation is being created, all 250 frames of it. Depending on your computer, the animation can take a long time, up to 10 minutes. I pause the video because it's kind of boring to watch the animation being created frame by frame. Here's the result. Some things to note. The fluid looks too geometric to be believable. We can help this by smoothing the fluid. Select the domain object which controls the color of the fluid as it falls. Go to the edit buttons. Press the set smooth button. Also subsurfing the fluid will help. So add a subsurf modifier at level 2. Select the domain. Press the bake button. For the sake of speed, let's reduce the number of frames to 50 when we animate. At 25 frames per second, this is a 2 second video, but it illustrates the point. Select the fluid object. Go to the physics buttons and change its type from fluid to inflow. Here's the result. The fluid is more, well, fluid-like. An inflow is a fluid object that adds fluid. Blender allows more than one fluid source, i.e. more than one inflow, like more than one faucet or shower head. However, only one domain is allowed. We're going to add an obstacle. Add a cube below the path of the fluid. Select the cube, making sure it's in object mode. Click on the object buttons, then the physics buttons, Go to the Fluid Simulator, Enable Fluid, and click on Obstacle. Running the Fluid Simulator produces the following render. Finally, we're going to add an outflow, which takes fluid away from the simulator. An outflow is like a bathtub or a faucet drain. To do this, add a plane above the cube in the path of the fluid. Select the plane in Object Mode. Go to the Fluid Simulator as before. Enable Fluid and click on the Outflow button. Select the domain, press the Bake button, and the animation should look similar to what you see here. The fluid disappears before it hits the obstacle. Remember the cube domain that we duplicated before? To make the simulation realistic, position it on the domain boundaries. You'll need to make it transparent and add materials and textures, no doubt. And probably you want to apply a realistic water, oil, or mucky texture and material to your fluids. But that's it. We've done a basic fluid simulation with a fluid in a domain. We've added an obstacle, in real life something like a bathtub or a sink, as well as an outflow like a drain. I hope this gives you the basic idea of how it works. Happy blending!